Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Vibers Show. This is Yukai Chow, and today we're going to talk about how the Viverse is there to provide all our needs. There's a Viverse for everything. And so if you look at all the things HTC does, we do a variety of things. We were the first to pioneer and scale up VR for gaming. We are the first to push for VR for business when you know companies have always thought this makes sense. Even today, I don't think enough people acknowledge and realize how much value we're creating for businesses in VR. And then we're also the first to pioneer VR for mental well-being and uh, emotional resiliency and strength. And as you know, whenever we push out something new, and this happens for most innovations, the world tends to have an issue with that because they'll say like, oh, no, this is different from what we expect. We we want what was there already, but better, right? And uh, I'm sure you've heard this quote before, but Henry Ford famously said that if I asked customers what they wanted, I would have given them a faster horse. And I think a lot of people are looking for uh, faster horses, right? Hey. Basically, we know VR is used for gaming, so let's just do make it a bit better for gaming every year. And of course, HTC Vive is also doing this, but we also want to bring in whole new categories uh, of product solutions and serve new demographics. So uh, sometimes our new offerings are not for your demographic, but it's for some groups that have never enjoyed VR before, they never experienced it, they never found the use case. And now we want to open it for them because our vision is to, again, have a Viverse for everyone is every type of person come in the Vivers and enjoy valuable experiences. And like I said, we're not abandoning anything else in the past. We're not abandoning consumers. We still make consumer hardware. We just also launch business hardware and we also wellness hardware and all these things that metaverse, blockchain, you know, we want to be there for all types of people. But we are trying new things. We are trying to innovate and we're trying to serve different types of people sometimes we do get some criticisms and we humbly accept all criticism. They're great feedback. We love the passion when people tell us that, hey, we're so disappointed, we're so upset with HTC and Vive. Even though it hurts a little bit, we do appreciate because it means that people have passion, they care, and they want us to do good. I think a lot of people want us to thrive in the industry and they have good memories about how they were with us at the very beginning. So I just want to say that we are trying, we're innovating, we're trying new things. We're not just staying the, the same ground and doing the same thing just a little better. We're we're taking a lot of risks to try new things and serve bigger populations. But this is where we go into why the Viverse is there for everything. Because as we know, the Viverse, we just talked about, has a variety of gaming solutions through a Vive port, which is a, a model where you pay a month subscription and you get hundreds to over a thousand pieces of VR content that you can implement consume. And that's very valuable in itself because a lot of times the problem with VR is that content is very expensive to produce so most games you play, it'll have between three to, let's say, 15 hours of content, and then it runs out, right? Because it's so expensive to produce. And so if you have to spend those $60 for each piece of that content, and then and then leave, it's, all, it's very costly. Of course, also, if you spend a lot of money, just try it out, you don't like it, even more so. So this model where you have a monthly subscription, you get to try all sorts of content and all their best five hours, I think it makes a lot of sense. But beyond that, we also serve videos, consumer, media, and all those things. So as you know, the metaverse and the Viver specifically is heavily used for business. There's a lot of simulated training environments. I think we're making great strides towards collaborating VR and having that empathetic VR experience where we see each other, we touch it, we see people's body language. As you know, our body language is so important in actual communication. And we see potential facial expressions down the road, more clear and clearer. So you can actually see things like admiration or anxiety just through VR. And I think that collaboration in VR as we get to a world where people work remotely more often, they work from home. I think that's immensely valuable. Again, the training part is important. There's a lot of companies that create training in VR. So uh, there's examples where firefighting teams, every time they actually need to drill a practice, it burns a lot of money, tens of thousands of dollars. But then they can practice in VR, and then suddenly every time they do a practice, it saves again tens of thousands of dollars. So that becomes very valuable. You see examples where football teams they're training a quarterback, and you know usually when you need to train quarterback to have the right instincts and all those things, you need to you know set up all the players on the field. They need to set up the environment, and then every round they have to reset it. It takes a lot of time. But in VR, the quarterback could get the same training, but then just focus on that one part that is the most useful, throwing out the ball, throwing out the ball. Okay, tension, throwing out the ball. So, so a lot of companies and businesses and teams in all types of industries are using the Viverse and solutions that are founded within the Vive to create 
a lot of value. There's also things like creating simulations for people experience, prototyping. There are archi architecture firms that before they actually build the building, they create the, the replica, you know, some people call that digital twin in the VR space, in our case, the Viverse. And so their clients can explore it. They can uh, feel how it's like. And then say, yes, I approve. This will be the building one of the build. Of course, the exciting feature is that they already have the 3D model of this building. So they can eventually just uh, move that into the Viverse. And if there's in the future, a variety of other solutions that come into place, like digital land, digital real estate, and you know, place you can explore, bigger versions of virtual chat experiences. You can have these buildings just go into this, these places and, you know, we're basically world building already with different architecture firms one at a time. And this is not what it, there is today, but that's an exciting future we're working towards. We focus on people who just like stay at home and watch a sh different show with the vibe flow and different content and exploring media from 2D content on a huge virtual screen to the surround screen, six off experiences. We, it's all there. As you know, we focus a lot on mental well-being and emotional strength and flourishing because we recognize that even though technology is getting better and better, people are not getting happier and happier. We think that's a huge problem. And so we would like our technology to make people happier, to get people to be emotionally stronger and, and have stronger mental health and be closer to their families. Speaking of closer to their families, you can see a lot of our marketing. It's really about family, right? It's, you know, our team member, Hurley, who is visiting a virtual museum with her grandmother and, and buying gifts for her. It's also spending time with, uh, with education with her children and also having that moment where she could kind of have her me time. So I think, Again, Viverse is there to provide a lot of things. People can go to concerts through Beat Day and other platforms. So, and this is very important. The Viverse is a platform. It's right now, HTC has created some application solutions on the Viverse platform, but it's supposed to be an open platform. And so Beat Day is one platform and one product and platform to experience concerts and be in the concert and have you know, not just replicate a normal concert, but have a magical experience where you can suddenly change environments and you can play little mini games and try to do uh, grabs of different rewards in a concert, right? So those are just applications in the Viverse, but we expect in the future, lots and lots of companies and developers can come to Viverse, create their solution and make the Viverse more and more vibrant. And again, we don't necessarily need to be the biggest metaverse out there, but we want to be the metaverse that cares about people the most. That's the most beneficial for humanity and the one that respects our patrons the most. Anyway, so there's a lot more about the Viveverse that I want to share. And let's wrap up here for this video and look forward to seeing you in the future videos in the Viveverse show. And with that said, I will see you guys next time. This is Yu Kai Chao, signing off.